time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day, her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then, eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger, rage even, her last craving before she drowned was for revenge, for blood. And so she returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat, and her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse. Those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers. But there was someone she had to see first. Someone special. Someone she really hated the most. As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. Nobody there. He almost felt disappointed, but before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. A dead body of a disemboweled cat hung on the radiator. Are you kidding me? Where would we get a dead cat from? I think that would be taking it a step too far. I'm sure you'll agree. 
Okay, fair point. So, right, that didn't actually happen. Let's try again. He noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was a cat's skull stuck on the seat of his bike. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed, remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong, and that something had entered his home now too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. A giant, blood-soaked zombie cat sat on his bed. Now that's really stupid. Fair enough. That didn't really happen. Everyone knows there's no such thing as giant zombie cats, right? What really happened was this. Cat Widow is here, was written all over the wall. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set as screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. There was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off, but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished. The part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor, was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped, like an animal. He had to get out of there. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper. More like a... She was there, in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face. 
and yet he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. She came closer, like a ghost, and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him. His knees go weak, his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. As much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then... He fainted. Ha ha ha! Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will, once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself. And I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam.